Shalom is the brother Kadash. Just give all praise to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rekha Kadash. That were honest to the apostles like great bills, though. Peace, blessings, and honors to all the brothers of this truth. I was, um, where was I at? I was on YouTube the other day, and I ended up coming across, I was, you know, going to the chariots, end up coming across this, um, it's a book called The Spaceships of Ezekiel, but you can get it in audio, as you see. You can get it in audio. And it's a cool little book. I did not read the whole book, but I did a little research on it to see what it was talking about and stuff like that. And it's pretty much a guy. Um, I believe he was like some type of scientist or researcher in a different in um in in um UFOs. No, not UFOs, but like flight, you know, stuff like that. And he um wanted to match something up with the bible he started reading the bible and he went to ezekiel will and he said that okay it sounds like a, a spaceship a ufo you know a chariot so he started doing some research and stuff like that and then he went into the scriptures and got the descriptions of them and he pretty much drew it out of what it actually looked like in real life if you draw out comparing to the scriptures at least from his understanding so it might be a little cool book to check out. This is just going to be a little quick one, a little cool book to check out pretty much. And he's going to go into it. This is Ezekiel 1, verse 16. The appearance of, which this is a good scripture to come to when you talk about the chariots. It got it got it all in here, man. Somebody asks you about chariots, you just go to Ezekiel 1, right? Verse 16. The appearance of the wheels and their work was like into the color of barrel. And they, they four had one likeness. And their appearances of their work was as it were a wheel in the midst of, in, in the middle of a wheel, right? So a wheel in the middle of a wheel, which is what a flying saucer looks like. And it's talking about chariots. Let me see if I can pull something else from here. I'll just go to verse 17. When they went, they went upon their four, four sides and they turned not when they went. So what do we know? What do we liken it to today that it flies in the sky and it doesn't turn? It doesn't have to turn like a jet and follow the nose. Well, that's what people call a UFO. When they see a flying saucer, it could go any direction and it doesn't have to turn. Like, it doesn't have a nose that it has to follow, where it has to turn and follow that nose. It just zips wherever, whichever way it wants to go. It'll zip this way, turn at a drop of the dime, and, and switch this other way. That's how we know, okay, it's talking about a so-called UFO in today's term, which is really just a chariot of the Lord with the angels. That the angels control. It's a chariot of the Lord. That's what it's talking about. So I'm going to let this play. The Spaceships of Ezekiel, 1974, is a book by Joseph F. Blumrick, March 17, 1913 to February 10, 2002, about a spaceship that was supposedly observed by the prophet Ezekiel, written while the author was chief of NASA's systems layout branch of the Program Development Office at the Marshall Space Flight Center. It was originally published in German by Econ Verlag GmbH under the title Da Tat Sitch der Himmel auf, March 1973. Topic History After ufologists such as Eric von Daniken had pointed to the possibility of interpreting Ezekiel's vision as a report of an extraterrestrial spacecraft, Blumrich decided to disprove the hypothesis. However, a thorough examination convinced him that Ezekiel had, in fact, seen a spaceship. He then made detailed drawings of the alien craft. He decided the technology of the builders must have been somewhat higher than mankind's at the present, and added he had seldom felt as delighted, satisfied, and fascinated by being proven wrong. Top. And this is uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17. Then we which were alive and remain shall be caught up together, and this is to go, with them in the clouds to meet the lord in the air so we gonna meet the lord in the air we're gonna be beamed up man and so shall we ever be with the lord for that day we always gonna be with the lord man you know that's the goal coming soon <laughs> second address chapter 13 this is where we gonna be beamed up at man 
Um, and lo, it came to pass after seven days I dreamed a dream by night. And lo, there arose a wind from the sea and it moved all the waves thereof. And I beheld, and lo, the man waxed with strong with the thousands of heavens. And when he turned with his countenance to look, all things trembled that were under him. And whensoever the voice went out his mouth, all they burned that that heard the, his voice, like as the earth felleth when when it filleth the fire. And after this, I behold, and lo, there was gathered together a multitude, of, a multitude of men out of number from the four winds of the heaven to subdue the man that came out the sea. So he came out. The sea is just likened into the heavens, which is the sky. But the sea is what you would call space, the water, the water above, right? But I beheld, and lo, he graved himself a great mountain and flew upon it. So is this being literal? Is this saying that he literally was on a mountain that he was flying upon? No, it's it's him trying to explain the UFO, the chariot that he's seen. It was gigantic like a mountain and he's seen a man flying on top of it. So he said, since it was so big and it was likened into a mountain, he said it was a great mountain. He's not going to say it was a spaceship. A UFO. He they didn't know nothing about that during that time. So he said it was a mountain, and a man was on, on on top of it. Right? Um, but I would have seen the region or place where out the hill was graven. I could not. So he trying to see where the mountain was touching down at to see if it was a mountain, but it wasn't touching down nowhere. Why? Because it was in the sky. It came out the sea. The waters above. It was in the sky. It was a chariot, man. A gigantic chariot, and that's where we're all going to be beamed up together in the clouds to meet with the Lord. Let a little bit of this play not end it off. Back. Content. In the spaceships of Ezekiel, Blumrick asserts that Ezekiel's account in the Bible was not a description of a meeting with God in a prophetic vision, but one of several encounters with ancient astronauts in a shuttlecraft from another planet. Yeah. Blumrick analyzes six different translations of the Bible in conjunction with his experience in engineering and presents one possible version of Ezekiel's visions of how God, described as riding in an elaborate vehicle capable to see, attended by angels, supposedly showed him the future and gave him various messages to deliver. Yep, and that happened with Ezekiel, and that goes back into second address what I was just saying. And First Thessalonians, um, I'm gonna jump back in here at chapter four because it was a little bit more on that. I'm just, I want to go back up to, um, I want to go back up to verse sixteen. It says, "For the Lord Himself should descend from heaven with a shout." Now that goes into Second Edges thirteen, what I was just talking about. When the Lord came, whoever looked at Him trembled. In the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall be raised first. So, the Lord coming back, man, on a gigantic chariot. And he's going to destroy this place, and he's going to save his people. I'm going to leave it there. This is going to be a quick one. Salvation to the election.